Hello and welcome to today's video where we will talk about the future. What would you like to know? About your future? I see. Okay, let me have a look. Ooh, light tell me. Oh. The light tells me you will live for 100 years. It's true. The light has said so. When we want to make a prediction about the future, we use the modal verb will and an infinitive. For example, I think you will live for 100 years. Very often, we also use the expression I think or I don't think or I'm sure together with will and infinitive. To make it negative, we add not to will. So, for example, I think you will not live for 100 years. And very often, will not gets contracted to won't. I think you won't live for 100 years. And to create a question with will, we can follow our quasi or asi trick. So first we use the auxiliary, in our case the modal verb will, then the subject, you, and infinitive, live. Will you live for 100 years? Who knows? Or we can also add a question word, for example, when will you live in 10 years time? And how do we use the modal verb will? Well, there are four different uses of this verb. Number one, predictions. Like we have already mentioned, you can use will to make predictions about the future when you are not sure whether it's true or not. For example, I think humans will meet aliens. At some point in the future, we will meet the Martians. Or, I don't think Donald Trump will win the next election. I just don't think he will. Am I sure? Nope, I'm not an expert on American politics. But I am sure England will win the next World Cup. England's the best football team ever. I mean, that's where football comes from. England! Talking about predictions, however, you might be familiar with the grammar be going to for predictions. We can use both will and be going to to make predictions about the future, but the main difference is when we use be going to, we need to have an evidence in present for this prediction. So, for example, you can point to the clouds outside and say, look, I think it's going to rain, because the clouds are an evidence that it's going to rain. It's still not 100% because it's a prediction, but you have some evidence for the prediction. Unfortunately, I have no evidence about aliens coming to Earth, apart from the light telling me that it will happen. Number two, instant decisions. We use will when we make a decision about the future, and we make the decision now, at the time of speaking. For example, I am quite hungry, so I will have an apple. Or when your teacher tells you that there will be a test next week, you'll say, okay, okay, I will revise during the weekend because I know I need to study. Or if you're making plans to meet someone and you agree on a time and place, you can say, okay, cool, I will meet you there because you made the decision in the moment to go and meet them at that point. Number three, offers. We use will for offers. For example, if someone is really struggling with grammar, you can say, that's fine, don't worry, I'll help you with this, I'll explain it to you. You offer your help. Or when you hear the doorbell, you can say, don't worry, I'll go and get it to your family, so no one else has to get up. Or, when the whole family is leaving for dinner and everyone's ready, you can say, OK, shall we go now? Making an offer and a suggestion to leave. 
And when we make offers in first person, we use shall instead of will. It means the same, but that's what we use. So you can say, I shall help you with this grammar, or I shall go and get the door. Number four, promises. Promises are very closely related to instant decisions because promises are often made at a time of speaking. And for them, we also use will. For example, if you have a problem with your homework, I can say, I'll help you. I promise. Or if you ask me to pick you up from the airport when your plane arrives, I can say, I'll be there. Don't worry. I promise you. Call me and I will be there. Talking about pronunciation, it is worth having a look at the negative contraction won't. Won't is pronounced as won't, which might sound quite similar to want when you desire something. Want as a desire is a short sound, like a clock or a dog. Want. I want ice cream. Won't, however, is a diphthong, which is two vowels blended into one. It sounds similar like a phone or an ice cream cone. Won't. We can practice it using this sentence. I won't want dinner when I get home later. Let's break it down. First, I'm going to pronounce the first three words five times. Then, Listen to me and repeat, and then we'll gradually add the rest of the sentence together. Okay? So, first, listen. I won't want. 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 I won't want dinner. I won't want dinner. I want one dinner, I want one dinner, I want one dinner. I want one dinner when I get home later. I want one dinner when I get home later. I want one dinner when I get home later. I want one dinner when I get home later. And I want one dinner when I get home later. Now let's check what you have learned. I'm going to ask you five questions. If you need to, Pause the video to think about the question and then check your answers, which will be in the description of the video down below. Number one, how do we create the negative form of will? Number two, how do we create questions using will? Number three, what is shall and how do we use it? Number four, if we want to make a prediction based on evidence in the present, what grammar form do we use? And question number five. If a decision about the future is made in the present, at the time of speaking, what grammar form do we use? So, I hope you feel a little bit more enlightened about the future and a little bit more confident about making predictions, offers, promises and decisions. Don't forget to follow the link up there for some additional practice so you can become a pro at making predictions. And what do you think about the future? Where do you think you will be in 10 years time? Have a great day everyone and I'll see you next week. And here is your bonus fact. In this video we talked about the modal verb will for future. But is it a tense? Is will a future tense? Well, the answer is a little bit more complicated than yes and no, but simply said, no. Will is not a tense. Technically speaking, English only has two tenses, and that's present and past. The reason for this is because the verb itself doesn't actually change when we use the modal verb will. We have to use another verb to express it 
and that's why it's technically not a tense. It is only a tense when the verb itself changes, which it does in the present, for example, I go to work, or he goes to work, where we add the ES, and it changes in the past when I say I went to work or he went to work. The verb itself, however, does not change when we talk about a future. And so if a verb needs another verb to help create the grammatical form like future or present perfect, we don't technically call it a tense. It's just a grammar form.